Howdy. So today I'm actually going to do a book review. I wasn't sure what channel to do this one on and I decided to do it on this one because it's not really leadership and diversity or healthcare, which I usually do on my business channel, but it is a business book and a very interesting one that I decided to share here because I do talk about blogging and social media and sometimes social media marketing and this is really more of a marketing and sales book and it's called go for no as you can see okay down here at the bottom uh, the writers are Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz that is a husband and wife and you can look up on YouTube they've got a few videos of, of some of the seminars that they do and basically what this book really is it's it's a piece of fiction that they put together that actually promotes a principle that they have which is called go for no now before I get too deep into what the book is about I'm gonna tell you I got this book because my friend Kelvin is one of these guys who's got this weird proclivity that maybe I need to adopt when he comes across a book and feels that someone else should read the book he buys the book and then gives it to them so this is probably the third book <laughs> that he has bought and given to me and I've had it for about a month, and then early Monday morning, he sent me a te say, text asking me if I'd read the book yet. And I said, no, I've, I've had other things going on. He says, oh, okay, well, let me know when you do. So I basically sat down in you know my chair in the living room after I went to find the book, because I wasn't really sure what I'd done with it. And I found the book, and it's not that thick. I mean, you know, about 70 pages. And I sat down, and basically 35 minutes later, I was done with the book. It's a very easy read. Um, basically, this is very interesting setup. It starts off with this guy who is a salesman. It doesn't say what industry he's in, but he's a salesman. And on a Monday, he basically closes the deal on the first three calls he makes. At the company he works for, he's supposed to close four deals a week. So he figures, hey, I've already closed three on Monday. I can coast the rest of the week. I'll be, you know, easily able to close one more by Friday. Tuesday, he gets caught up in paperwork. Wednesday, he gets caught up in something for the company that he knew he shouldn't have gotten himself into, but he did. And so he's still thinking that he's got all this time to go. And he decides he's going to go golf on Thursday, but he thinks it's Wednesday because he messed up. So his wife tells him, you know, tomorrow's Thursday, right? And he's like, oh my goodness, oh, I didn't remember. So anyway, he, at one point, he falls. And he trips and he smacks his head. And when he wakes up, he doesn't feel quite right. And he's in a house that he doesn't fully recognize but everyone seems to know who he is, but they're saying, boy, you look strange. There's something odd about him. And what happens is that he basically ends up 10 years into his future, only he's not necessarily him anymore. He's in this house that his future self or his other self has bought. And his other self has become this great success. And he's in the same house. And, you know, he was looking around and he found a book. And so he calls himself up and he answers. <laughs> and he basically, you know, talks to him, you know, through the thing saying, yeah, I'm you. You won't believe this. I'm in your house. He says, you can't be. He says, call me here at the office. So he calls it. The guy answers the phone. He says, okay, I'm coming home. So in essence, they meet each other and they look a lot alike except the new him looks real trim and you know pretty clean and whatever and old him looks a little busted up you know he's 30 pounds heavier and he you know a little scraggly but you know otherwise they look the same so they start having this conversation and what it all boils down to is that at some point in the past for both of them they had the exact same encounter but one of them took a different message that helped him to succeed and the other one totally missed the message and therefore he basically was just kind of skirting by and so you go through this process where the new guy basically is schooling the old guy even though they're the same guy so it sounds really weird but it was very well done how they did it and it's easy to remember because it's done as a story and basically the principle of go to know says that instead of going for the successes, in other words, instead of saying, I'm going to uh, reach out 
and, and make four great connections this week, what you do instead is you go for the no. So you say, okay, I'm going to go for 15 no's. And what that basically says is that if your percentage says that you close a deal every, you know, three or four no's, so to speak, you're not necessarily paying attention. Well, it's quite possible that you just might hit all the deals that you were hoping to hit a lot earlier, but you haven't reached your no's. So why not continue going for more until you get all the no's? So in other words, it's not based on a success thing, you know, like most of us. And, you know, I'm the same way. I've always been this way. If I say that I want to make five good connections and I make my five good connections, I'm done. That's it. Hey, look, I'm Mr. Successful. <laughs> but if I say, you know what, I'm going to shoot and see if I can get 20 people to put me down, to say no, you know, totally no, at least once. Well, who knows? I might not make the five. I might make the five. I might make seven, I might make eight, I might make 10. And what that does is it helps you to make more money or have a better opportunity to succeed because you have gone beyond where you would have gone if all you were looking to do is have the success. So this is it. I mean, that's the basic principle. But this book here, I was really amazed that I liked it as much as I did. And what's funny about it is that later on, I was going for a neighborhood walk, and my wife called me on the phone right as I started. And as I'm walking, I decided to tell her the story. And like I said, I read this book in 35 minutes, and I was telling her all these concepts in the book and whatever, and I remembered every single thing. And, you know, considering I speed read, and over the years, my memory hasn't been as tight during speed reading as it used to be, I'm, I remember the entire thing. I don't remember, you know, certain details, which is how that goes. Like, for instance, the guy's name in the book. No idea. <laughs> I could look it up, but we don't care. I mean, the truth of the matter is, you know what? I'm not making any money off of this. Go check this out. I think you can buy it on on Amazon. I think you can buy it on Barnes & Noble. I don't think you can get it on the Kindle. I'm not sure. Maybe you can. I couldn't get it on the Nook, but it didn't matter because I got the book. But check it out. Like I said, go for no. Richard Fenton over here. Andrea Waltz. Look up their YouTube videos. I'm telling you, y'all are going to like this. Um, and that's what I'm, I've got for you. You know, if you're looking to make money, whether it's online or offline, this is the way to do it. It'll change the way you think about things. And I recognize that it doesn't apply totally to everything. Because in one of the industries that's, you know, that I consult in, I haven't had a problem with getting no's. I have a problem with getting anybody <laughs> to talk to me to begin with. So there's got to be a way to figure out how this principle could work for me based on that. And I have to think about that. But it's something to think about. Anyway. I hope you check it out. Let me know what you think about stuff like this. And also let me know what you think about uh, whether the book review kind of thing works for you or not. I'm Mitch Mitchell. I haven't said that for a few videos, so I decided I'd say it. Y'all take care. Have a great week.